Hi there, this is of course Nick Dutch, back on the camera again one more time. It's great to be here once again on YouTube telling you my thoughts and feelings on the subject of psychic related subjects. Alright, now there are a few people who I know and I've been getting rather a lot of inquiries of the same vein, of the same nature recently. And so what I thought I'd do is I'd try and put, um, you know, the answer to all these little questions into this one particular video so it's there for all of you people out there who've been making inquiries, okay? There are some people who want to develop the ability to be a psychic, let's say, but they don't necessarily believe in clairvoyance or telepathy or psychic power per se. But what they do believe in is, you know, the power of the human mind, the human mind being able to do things, okay? which would be, let's say, rapid calculation of information. About 20 years ago, I think it was, I did a bit of research into thought, into, you know, thinking the way that our, our human brains process information. And there was one individual who wrote an interesting article which suggested that, you know, you've got two parts of your brain. There's a part of your brain that actually does the actual thinking, and then, of course, there's the verbal part of your brain which tries to make sense of it all. Okay? And so you tend to think in words, that information gets transmitted to the part of the brain which does the thinking, and then the information is going to be transmitted back to um, the part of the brain which deals with words again, and you have this like conversation between these two parts of your brain. Now the very fact that you're using this part of the brain which uses words is great, because you can use that to communicate to other people, you know, you've got the words, you've got the vocabulary and all the rest of that, this part of the brain is really important. But because of the interchange of ideas uh, being dominated by words, being dominated by language, it slows down the rates of transmission of information. And so one thing that you could do for yourself, if you wanted to train yourself to develop something akin to psychic ability, but without actually being psychic, is to try and train yourself more in terms of how to think non-verbally. Okay, try and process as much information as you can non-verbally before you try and retranslate that back into verbal information. And you can do that through visualization exercises, you can do that through contemplation. Maybe you want to have a look at mathematical problems and try and work them out inside your own mind. Be honest with yourself, okay? Don't just go up to your friend and say, oh, I can do this stuff without, you know, without using words, you know, I can think without using words. Be honest with yourself, because it will only be you who's, you know, uh, lying to yourself if it turns out you aren't doing it right. So practice. Also think about physical objects, think about mechanical objects, try and visualize the, the basic mechanisms that you might find in a watch or in a clock, uh, counter mechanisms, escapements, and all the rest of that, or different varieties of gears and gear ratios moving, and, and put that into your self-training. Once you've been doing that for an extended period of time, you'll probably start to find that you can then start to process information non-verbally. Okay, which can be a good thing. Try and apply it to as many different um, areas of life as you can in your spare time, not during your working day when you actually need to use, you know, this um, important verbal part of your brain, but during your spare time when you've got plenty of time to be able to think uh, and work upon other aspects of your personal self-development. But it's quite an interesting skill to be able to develop. Often people who do things such as public speaking uh, tend to use a skill, an intellectual or creative skill, which is very similar to this. Okay, but they apply it to words and to the audience and to the arguments they're using and so on and so forth. So this is something that you yourself could um, give a go at and try and practice and, and basically work with. Uh, it can be useful if you suddenly are stuck with a physical problem like um, how to uh, mend a drain or uh, how to repair your desk or something like that. You can think about all the various forces in, uh, that's that's happening there, all the physical forces, weights, uh, pressures, where the latches are, and all that stuff, and you can then try and put that into some kind of like coherent model as to a possible solution, or you can work out a number of different possibilities through uh, essentially creative cognition, all right, using your visualization capacity and your non-verbal mind down here, okay, to the greatest possible, uh, you know, possible extent, prior to getting that information sent back to the part of your brain which deals with 
the use of language and trying to interpret the new idea that you've got and place that into words. Okay? You may find yourself becoming a more efficient individual when it comes to certain varieties of thoughts. But don't assume you suddenly become a complete and utter expert in everything. The fact of the matter is you will not have become a complete and utter expert in everything. What you will have done is you will have developed some more intellectual and creative skills which you will find useful. Now, sometimes when I'm doing my work and people, you know, if they want a reading from me, all right, sometimes, let's say I'm not getting it from spirit, all right, just, just once in a while it happens. Sometimes I would use this, you know, this creative visual component to be able to read an individual. This is, this is just a fact. It's one of the many psychic skills. The word, the word psychic is appropriate here because essentially it deals with the mind, all right, and the word psychic just refers to the mind. So it is still a psychic skill and a psychic power, but it's not necessarily what we'd associate when we're dealing with um, ghosts, angels, spirits, and all the rest. I had this individual come to me, I was doing this pub gig, and he came to me and he sat down at my table, and he uh, says, okay, tell me, you know, tell me about myself. And I just looked at him, and after about five seconds I told him, well, you know, you." You're a small businessman. And I told him a bit about the, the background which I assumed he had. And after I'd said my piece, he asked me whether I had Googled him. Because he left his name at reception. I told him that I had not. I'd never heard his name before. Uh, and I'd never seen him before. And I certainly had not done any research on him. Because I had not. But what I had done is look very closely at him. Now, he had a certain demeanor to him which suggested a certain, you know, some level of confidence. That would imply um, a good income, a stable life, not too much in the way of worries. He held his body not in a very authoritative manner. I mean, someone who is uh, the managing director of a massive organization will be truly confident, will have their chest pushed out, their shoulders back. And you'll, you know, you'll feel their presence in the room because they will emanate it by their body language. He didn't do that. But he still had that sense of presence. So essentially that already gave away to me, very quickly, the impression that he was a person of status, but in a small organization of some description. His body was quite physically well developed. And as his face and his skin had not, uh, did not give the, as it were, the symptoms of him having spent a lot of his time outdoors, I came to the conclusion he'd worked out in a gymnasium. Uh, there are a few other clues about him, including just uh, his style of accents which gave away some aspects of his education as well. So he was obviously at least degree educated, gave up with education relatively early on, and gave himself a bit of experience in the corporate world, and then moved into business. It was, uh, it was quite simple. I could work this out within about five seconds of looking at the man. And that's because I was using this particular form of psychic skill, which anybody can learn to use. Some people call it mentalism, but this is only one of the myriad tools that a professional psychic would actually use in their daily work. But remember, it's one out of millions.